O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from every evil. Amen. O Lord, have mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. Bless your ministers with righteousness and make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fights for us, but only you, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, do not take your Holy Spirit from us. The Second Book of Kings, Chapter 25 On the seventh day of the fifth month, in the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, captain of the royal guard who served the king of Babylon, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned down the Lord's temple, the royal palace, and all the houses in Jerusalem, including every large house. The whole Babylonian army that came with the captain of the royal guard tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard, deported the rest of the people who were left in the city, those who had deserted to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the craftsmen but he left behind some of the poor of the land and gave them fields and vineyards. 
The Babylonians broke the two bronze pillars in the Lord's Temple, as well as the movable stands and the big bronze basin called the Sea. They took the bronze to Babylon. They also took the pots, shovels, trimming shears, pans, and all the bronze utensils used by the priests. The captain of the royal guard took the gold and silver censers and basins. The bronze of the items that King Solomon made for the Lord's temple, including the two pillars, the big bronze basin called the sea, the, seven, the twelve bronze bulls under the sea, and the movable stands were too heavy to be weighed. Each of the pillars was about 27 feet high. The bronze top of one pillar was about four and a half feet high and had bronze lattice work and pomegranate shaped ornaments all around it. The second pillar with its lattice work was like it. The captain of the royal guard took Seraiah the chief priest and Zephaniah the priest who was second in rank and the three doorkeepers. From the city he took a eunuch who was in charge of the soldiers, five of the king's advisers who were discovered in the city, an official army secretary who drafted citizens for military service, and sixty citizens from the land of the people who were discovered of the, in the city. Nebuzaradan, captain of the royal guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. The king of Babylon ordered them to be executed at Riblah in the territory of Hamath. And so Judah was deported from its land. Now King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon appointed Jedaliah, son of Akiham, son of Shaphan, as governor over the people who he allowed to remain in the land of Judah. All the officers of the Judite army and their troops heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Jedaliah to govern. So they came to Jedaliah at Mizpah. The officers who came were Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, Johanan, son of Karea, Sereah, son of Taumeth, the Neophyte, and Jazaniah, son of Makahi. Jedaliah took an oath so as to give them and their troops some assurance of safety. He said, You don't need to be afraid to submit to the Babylonian officials. Settle down in the land and submit to the king of Babylon. Then kings will go well for you. But then in the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, son of Elishama, who was a member of the royal family, came with ten of his men and murdered Jedaliah, as well as the Judeans and Babylonians who were with him in Mizpah. Then all the people, from the youngest to the eldest, as well as the army officers, left for Egypt, because they were afraid of what the Babylonians might do. In the thirty-seventh year of the exile of King Jehoiakim of Judah, on the twenty-seventh day of the twelfth month, King Evil Merodach of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, pardoned King Jehoiakim of Judah and released him from prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a more prestigious position than other kings who were with him in Babylon. Jehoiakim took off his prison clothes and ate daily in the king's presence for the rest of his life. He was given daily provisions by the king for the rest of his life until the day he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 2 Now when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a violent wind blowing came from heaven and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Tongues spreading out like a fire appeared to them and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven residing in Jerusalem. When this sound occurred, a crowd gathered and was in confusion because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Completely baffled, they sent, they said, Aren't all these men who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each one of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and the province of Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselyte, Cretan and Arab. We hear them speaking in our own languages about great deeds that God has done. All were astounded and greatly confused, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others jeered at the speakers, saying, Ha, they're drunk with new wine. But Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You men of Judea, all you who live in Jerusalem, know this and listen carefully to what I say. In spite of what you think, these men are not drunk, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what was spoken about through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it will be, God says, that I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will perform wonders in the sky above and miraculous signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will be changed to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Collect for Peace O God, who is the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for our safe preservation. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance to do always that which is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, let me accept calmly all that this day might bring me, and let me devote myself completely to your sacred will. Direct me and help me each hour of this day. Control my thoughts and feelings in all my deeds and words. When unpredictable circumstances arise, do not let me forget that everything comes from you. 
Lord Jesus, Son of God, it is better not to live than to live without you. I thank you, God, for the gift of this new day and for all the good deeds you will help me do today. Holy Spirit, help me to dedicate this day to my Lord and Saviour. Teach me to be just toward my brother and sister, never to provoke wrath or cause sorrow. Control my will and teach me to pray, to believe, to hope, to suffer, to forgive and to love. Amen. We pray for the work of your faithful servants throughout the world, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen.